Good morning, congregation, and happy Thursday. Good morning. We are so glad that you're here with us today, and welcome to the Unveiled Podcast. Pastor T, as always, is going to start us out with a prayer. Loving God, thank you for this time together, whatever time it is, whatever day it is. But Lord, remind us that this is your word. And your word speaks to us differently and in different ways at different times in our lives. So, Lord, speak to us today. Amen. Amen. Good prayer. I always like when she centers us with prayer. Uh, Before we get started, we're going to be doing James, if you want to turn in your Bible right now, to James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. But before we get started, I learned something this morning in my Bible time before I came to work. And it was a fun fact, and I wanted to share it. Share. So I'm doing the Bible recap. I think I've mentioned that probably several times. And we just started the New Testament yesterday. So we're reading through Luke, John, and Matthew right now. We haven't added in Mark just yet. But in Matthew, it talks about the shepherds. It goes in depth about the shepherds. And one of the things that I learned is that the shepherds in this particular pasture, they think were they were raising these lambs and that's where the sacrificial lambs came from. Mm. So a sacrificial lamb needed to be unblemished. It needed to be practically perfect. I mean, that was supposed to be your best that you give to God. And so what they would do is they would wrap it in swaddling clothes and swaddle it up so that it wouldn't get bruised or scratched or, you know, bleed at all. And if you think about it, what did they do with Jesus when he was born? Mm-hmm. They, they put him in swaddling him swaddle. clothing. Mm-hmm. So when the angel came to the shepherds and said, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, it was almost like a little bit of, um, like, not secret talk, but like a little code to them, like, this should make sense to mm-hmm. you. You should understand that this means that this baby is so precious mm-hmm. and that this baby is without blemish mm-hmm. and is special. So I thought that was so cool Very when I cool. read that this I morning. I like that. Yes. That's I wanted awesome. to share it with you guys. I love it. Let's move on to our scripture. Okay. I will read my New Living Translation, James 1, verses 19 through 20. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. What does yours say? You must understand this, my beloved. I love the beloved. I love that. You must understand this, my beloved, let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Yes. And I think we wanted to talk about this because last week we talked a little bit about righteous anger and, you Mm -hmm. know, Jesus flipping tables and, you know, that's when Jesus gets angry. But there are several times in the Bible where God gets angry. Mm -hmm. And there's even somewhere in the Bible where it says that God's anger was hot, like he was really angry. And... It's okay to get angry. And I think Mm -hmm. we've talked about that before, that all emotions are okay. Yes. But it's what you do with those emotions. Mm -hmm. Because I was reading something about it, and it said that there are a couple different reasons why in James he says that human anger does not produce righteousness. Because we are imperfect, right? Mm -hmm. We're imperfect humans. And so we have several options to go astray from what we're supposed to be doing Because our anger doesn't always necessarily lead to righteous anger. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's going to lead to sin, Mm -hmm. right? So um, what do you think about that? What comes to mind when you hear that? We need to be angry Mm -hmm. about things. There are things in this world that we need to be angry about. If we get so complacent, then nothing's going to change. Right. And so we need to speak up. We need to get in with the politicians and change the laws and all of this. Um, But even with each other, I mean, I would hope that we have the relationship where you can come in and go, okay, what you did was wrong. Mm -hmm. What you said was not appropriate. Right. Call me on it. Yeah. And then I might get angry, but hopefully then I can go, no, wait, she's my friend. Mm -hmm. She's trying to help me so that I don't continue doing this. And then knowing you, you would go, okay, so once we figure that out, what's really going on? Yeah. What caused that outburst? What caused those words? Right. But again, if we don't get angry, we can become complacent. 
I think that's very true. Um, it's very easy for us to sit back and go, I'm not going to say anything. It's not my place. Mm-hmm. It's not my place to say anything. And, you know, the Bible talks about, there is a spot in the Bible, and now I can't remember where it is because I was reading about it this morning. I believe it's in Ephesians. It specifically talks about getting angry and the things that can come from anger. And sometimes it's, it is change. And mm-hmm. sometimes it is things that need to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is also very easy to go, that's not my place. I'm not going to, not yes. my circus, not my yeah. monkeys. I'm not going to get in well, there. I mean, just think about just off the top of my head, the civil rights movement. Right. Because somebody got angry and somebody goes, no, this isn't right. Right. Laws changed. Mm-hmm. Um, with children and special needs, okay? Instead of putting them in a separate classroom and keeping them away Mm -hmm. from other kids, and so then they're like, oh, wait, that kid's in a wheelchair or whatever, and people don't know how to interact. Mm -hmm. Somebody said no. Right. They need to be in the same environment with all these kids, Mm -hmm. and kids can teach us so much about loving, but law. somebody got angry and a law changed. Right. Because sometimes when we have this righteous anger, mm-hmm. because God says in the Bible, it's okay to be angry. You know, mm-hmm. it is okay for you to be angry. Anger comes for a reason. Every emotion comes for mm-hmm. a reason. And so when we embrace that anger, but we are slow to anger, mm-hmm. and it doesn't mean stay complacent. I yeah. think what it means is you contemplate that anger. Yeah. Why am I angry? Yeah. What am I angry mm-hmm. at? What was the trigger mm-hmm. there? Mm-hmm. What can change? Yeah. Or... A lot of times, why am I angry? What was the trigger? Should I really be angry about this? Which most of the time you can be angry, but also saying, okay, I can be angry in this moment, but this is not a moment for me to go start flipping tables. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the other thing is, is when I've learned this through um, being a pastor for many years is I have to, if my emotions are tied into this, mm-hmm. I'm not going to hear the other person. Right. So I have to get my motion, my emotions in check. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they're right or wrong. I just, I, the feelings are feelings. Right. But I have to get it in check so that I can hear. Because again, Absolutely. it says, you must understand this. Let everyone be quick to listen. Mm-hmm. Slow to speak and slow to anger. So when you hear quick to listen, I was reading a commentary about this and it hit me as something that I don't see it as, or I try not to see it as. Maybe I don't read it that way, but I do it anyway. But in a society, as humans, we all have this desire to be heard, right? Mm -hmm. You have something to say, you want it to be heard, you want someone to know Mm -hmm. that you know what you're talking about or you have something Mm -hmm. to say. And so it's very easy for us to be like, oh, oh, I want to speak, oh, I want to speak. But when it means quick to listen, it doesn't mean, let me quickly get this over with listening to you. No, no. Quickly listen to what you're saying so that I can jump in and mm-hmm. speak. It means let me qu- be quick to check myself and actually open my ears and listen to what this person is saying to me. That way I can be slow to speak. I'm not letting yeah. things roll off my it's, tongue. That it's are called not active right. listening. Exactly. It's active, active listening. listening. Listen to the person mm-hmm. and not, because we all have those people in our lives that, they have a story to go with our story. Everyone, yeah. And then they have to one-up it. And right. then, oh, and then, I mean, I you hear about it with celebrities all the time. I love watching celebrities do interviews, especially when there's several of them together, because they're all trying to one-up each other on who they've met mm-hmm. and who they have a connection with. So all these names are being dropped. Right. And so we're, it's telling us to actively listen, mm-hmm. because when you actively listen to a person, you can hear in their tone, in their body language, because listening is not just the hearing the words. Right. It's actively listening to their whole being. Right. And then you mirror what they're saying and saying, okay, I heard you say this. Is this what you meant? Is this what you were feeling? Right. So, I mean, I, as a chaplain, we did a lot of training on active listening Mm -hmm. and I do it all the time and I teach classes on it all the time is to just pay attention because active listening is so much more than just using your ears. Right. I'm glad you said that. We took a class this weekend called SAMA. It's a, I don't even remember exactly what SAMA stands for. Oh, it doesn't stand for anything. SAMA is something in the Japanese culture that if you put it at the end of somebody's name, it means that they are well respected. Mm. Um, anyway, so they call it SAMA training and we have to do it for foster care. And 
the whole first part of this training is de-escalation tactics mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. making sure that you help whoever that you're talking to, mm -hmm. whether it's a child or an adult, a teen, you know, mm -hmm. um, help them realize that you are there to help, not to hurt. And so one of the things that you ask is, and it is active listening, active listening, mm -hmm. like every part of your body, because you're not just listening. Oh, Pastor T, I can see that you're crossing your arms and I can see mm -hmm. that you're scowling. Mm -hmm. Are you angry? Mm -hmm. And you give them a chance to say, yes, I am angry. And you move on and say, okay, I, I can see that you're angry. What are you angry about? Yeah. Yeah. And you never ask the word why. Why are you angry? Yeah. Because why can sound very accusatory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you say, what are you angry about? And you help them realize the whole thing is very cool. And if you are somebody who yeah. works with children, it's kind of a very cool training to go through because you learn a lot. I'm like, I could really use this with toddlers. Like, Well, it, you also learn it. And so it's totally a side note, which I love talking about kids and their and active listening mm -hmm. is with my daughter, I learned her cries. Mm -hmm. She didn't come to me until she was two and a half, mm -hmm. but I could tell by her cries if she was mad. And I know moms that have raised their children from birth, they know this, but her also, she has a different cry because she has flashbacks mm -hmm. um, to her life before me. And those cries, I have been able to explain to her teachers and everybody in her world so they also can know, oh, wait, she's no longer fully present in today right. because her cry. But because I was mm -hmm. actively listening to her whole being, I could tell that the cry, which the as soon as that cry changed, I was like, okay, she's no longer present. Yeah. So. And learning those, and as a parent or as a spouse or, mm -hmm. you know, in a friendship, whatever kind of relationship, learning the people that you're with and going, okay, the thing that's happening right now, something has happened. There's a trigger. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to sit back and be slow to, mm -hmm. slow to speak, quick to listen, and just be yeah. here as a person of support. Yeah. Um, I do it with my dad. My dad um, can no longer, we can get one or two words, mm -hmm. but his grunts, mm -hmm. I, I have figured out his grunts are he's in pain, oh, yeah. um, he's hungry, mm -hmm. um, or he's just ticked off at me and I need to back off. Yeah. And, and we should remember that too, mm -hmm. because we should remember that as Christians, our job is to be you know quick to listen slow to speak and slow to get angry mm -hmm. and so when we're dealing with somebody who is maybe a family member that is frustrating us to know in like we talked about last mm -hmm. week it's okay to tap out and yeah. say before i say something that is mm -hmm. unkind mm -hmm. and get into unrighteous anger mm -hmm. i'm going to take a break and step away but also realizing in those moments oh i've done this before i know what this means yeah. i've heard this before I'm going to take a break. I'm yeah. just going to take a second. And it takes a lot of introspection mm -hmm. of ourselves mm -hmm. to really go, okay, this is a trigger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. My daughter knows the exact word to tell me that triggers me into why the heck am I a mom? Mm -hmm. And so then I go back in a spiral and I'm like, okay, I'm like, she did it to me last week. And I was like, I'm going to walk to the car. I saw her in the parking lot. I knew exactly where she was. But I was like, I need to walk to the car and calm myself down mm -hmm. because that trigger, oh, she hit it. Yeah. And you getting angry is only going to cause her mm -hmm. to get angry because mm -hmm. as the adult, we're supposed to know more. Mm -hmm. Do we all the time? No. Yep. But we're supposed to know more and be able to model that mm -hmm. slow to anger. So this is what's interesting. And this is a total side note, and we might be running out of time. So the, the author of this book, James, mm -hmm. is the brother... Of Jesus. Jesus, yes. So if you look, sometimes I like to know that because then when I read James, I'm like, hmm, what was that? What was that? What was that interaction between him and Jesus? Oh, I would love to know as siblings. Like. Yes. For him to be able to go, you know. So think about this. Just think about this is James talking mm -hmm. to us, but his brother is Jesus. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Can you imagine being Jesus' brother? <laughs> this is like, what a blessing and also, oh my gosh, how oh my terrifying. Because I'm sure, I mean, 
and we don't know. And, and they so, had seven kids. Yeah. So Jesus was the first of six, like, yeah. or of seven. He, he had six younger brothers and sisters. And so, yeah, can you imagine? Not only are you brother or sister <laughs> to Jesus, but Jesus was this firstborn child, this <laughs> perfect, could yes. not sin, firstborn child. But, oh my gosh, how much you would have learned yes. by being a sibling of mm -hmm. Jesus. And could you just imagine the, the? I mean, our older siblings, you're that older sibling. I'm, I have two older brothers. And they would love to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were not Jesus. Right. And they would love to tell me what oh, to do. I think it's, I think it's so, ingrained in the so English child. Every once in a while, I just like to read James as reminding myself brother. that that's the younger brother of Jesus. And like, hmm. I wonder if some of this came in from yeah. a, a, an encounter Can you with imagine their sibling. Them, like roughhousing? I can't yeah. imagine them roughhousing. But then Jesus popping up saying, Remember, be <laughs> slow to anger. Remember, I'm God's son. Yes. I, <laughs> yes. So oh, it's just those random things that get in cool my head. It is very cool to look at it that way. It is very cool to look at it that way. This has kind of gone in a different direction than mm -hmm. I thought it would, but I like it. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Like we've been very transparent yeah. before, sometimes we figure out the verse that morning. Mm -hmm. I did not verse map this. Yesterday was a crazy day in our house. And so it was just kind of, I knew we wanted to talk about anger and righteous anger. And this was kind of the verse that mm -hmm. stuck out to me when I was looking at anger verses. And so next kind of week, like let's go to, the, let's go to Jesus. Okay. Let's go to the righteous anger of Jesus flipping the tables. I did look through that. And it was very surprising to me. So three of the four Gospels talk mm -hmm. about it. Uh, John maybe doesn't talk about it. No. Well, but yeah, we'll look at it next week. We'll definitely do that. We'll just take a look at that scripture. Maybe not necessarily unpack it. But yeah. it's sometimes really cool to just go through and see what happened before, what happened after. I love to read mm -hmm. commentaries on these yeah. kinds of and things. And then what we'll do is, and, and I'll do a little bit of more of a background of this is to look at it from the Gospels okay. and see what's different about it and mm -hmm. what's um, in common about it. I have started to see that because mm -hmm. there are two Gospels of the three that mention it that use ones that use the exact, mm -hmm. which is really cool if you think about it. Mm -hmm. They use word for word the exact same yep. sentence. Yep. yep, yep, it's called Gospel Parallels. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, to a T, and then the other one, doesn't not it's not like he's lying yeah but he uses a different part but of then that and then where in the story of jesus is it yes it's usually different mm -hmm. so yeah we will definitely talk about that so, next week. we'll talk about that next week thank you guys so much for joining us today as we travel to james again as always if you have a scripture or a passage that you'd like for us to unpack we would love to do it but until next time we'll see you later see you later remember active listening active listening